It's a very interesting question. I'll classify this one as a 700 plus GMAT problem solving question. Combines concepts from two important topics, permutation combination and coordinate geometry. Classify this question as a framework question, a classic this one is. At the end of solving this question, I'm going to leave you with two variants of this question. You can lean heavily on the methodology that we'll be using to solve this question to crack those two variants. After you crack those, post your answer to the discussion board, to the comment section of this particular video. Let's get started. Rectangle ABCD is constructed in the XY plane so that sides AB and CD are parallel to the X axis. For the X and Y coordinates of all four vertices of the rectangle are integers. So two points given, which two sides are parallel to X axis and the fact that the coordinates, X and Y coordinates of all four vertices need to be integers. How many rectangles can be constructed? If X and Y coordinates satisfy these two inequality, X lies in the open interval 11 to 29, Y lies in the closed interval 5 to 13. Just make a note of these little things so you know that you don't get things wrong. Let's get started. Let's draw a rectangle and see what all conditions it should satisfy. The first one, A, B and C, D should be parallel to the X axis that they are. Which means the other two sides, A, D and B, C will be parallel to the Y axis. That's point number one done, right? They mentioned this, we have done it. The second point they've said is that X and Y coordinates of all four vertices need to be integers. I'll just pick one example set of values so that we know what we are talking about. Something like A could be a 13 comma 7 and B could be something like 16 comma 7. Correspondingly, see the X coordinate is going to remain the same. Let's say the Y coordinate becomes 10 and in this case, it's going to be a 13 comma 10. You'll notice that all four values, the X and Y coordinates of all four vertices end up being integers. Now, how do we get started? The starting point for me is to basically take a slice of the graph sheet and plot this required interval that we are looking at. Let's pick x values in the open interval 11 to 29, take that slice and y values in the closed interval 5 to 13. So what all values can x take? You can take values from 12, go all the way up to 28 because we're interested only in the integer values of x. Here it's going to take values from 5 all the way up to 13. Here is the graph sheet we are talking about. X coordinate starts from 12, goes all the way up to 28. So 28 minus 11, we are going to count 12. So we'll count, eliminate, subtract up to 11. So that leaves us with 17 values along the X axis. Starting, we are going from 5 all the way up to 13. So in the first 30 numbers, we are not counting the first four. So we have nine values when you're talking about in the Y values. Y values nine, X values 17. How do I get a rectangle? First temptation is to say, pick four points. One, two, three, four. Where the intersection of these grid lines are and just complete them, you are going to get a rectangle. So obvious temptation, what could be the methodology? Look at how many such intersection points are there. We have 17 vertical lines. We have nine horizontal lines. So how many meeting points will we have? We have 17 into nine, 153 such meeting points are there. Pick four out of those, you have the answer. 153C4 seems to be the first temptation to go with. But hold on, we just went about it that way. Let's say I pick a point here, I pick a second point here, pick a third point here and pick a fourth point here. If I join these, obviously I'm not going to get a rectangle. So picking any four out of these 153 points is not the answer. So one of the red earrings that we had, answer option B can definitely be eliminated. Let's look at what a rectangle is. This question says, two of the sides are parallel to x-axis. So if I basically pick two horizontal lines, I picked lines for A, B and C, D. I picked two vertical lines. Let me pick this line and let me pick this line. Pick two vertical lines. I basically got lines for A, D and B, C. So if of all the nine horizontal lines that I have, if I pick two horizontal lines and of, of the 17 vertical lines, I pick any two vertical lines, I'll find that the enclosed space between these lines is going to be a rectangle. Let's just pick something here. I'm picking this horizontal line. I'm picking this horizontal line. I'm picking this vertical line. And I'm picking this vertical line. So what is enclosed between these four lines is actually another rectangle. So all that we need to do is to figure out in how many ways can I pick two horizontal lines and in how many ways can I pick two vertical lines. We have realized that we have a total of 17 vertical lines because the X coordinates take values from 12 to 18. For each of these values, we can draw a vertical line. So out of these seven, 17 vertical lines, we need to pick two. How many ways can I achieve that? I can do that in 17 C2 ways. Just compute the value right away. So that's 17 into 16 divided by 2 into 1. 17 into 8 is what we have, which is equal to 136 ways we can pick two vertical lines. 
how many horizontal lines do we have we have nine y values corresponding to each one we'll have an horizontal line we have seen it in the last slide so of these nine horizontal lines we need to pick two of them that can be done in 9c2 ways the value of 9 choose 2 is equal to 9 times 8 upon 1 times 2 cancels out as a 4 the number of ways of picking two horizontal lines out of 9 is 36 when do we get a rectangle when we have picked two horizontal and two vertical lines. So we'll come to the answer in the next slide. We'll just summarize up till this point. So we pick the two horizontal lines in 36 ways, 9C2. We pick the two vertical lines in 17C2, which is 136 ways. So number of ways of picking two horizontal and two vertical. We learnt it in our permutation combination lessons. Whenever you combine them with an and, multiply the numbers. So answer is going to be 36 into 136. This calculation actually looks a little daunting. Not so much. 36 into the 136, I'll write it as 100 plus 36. So 36 into 100 is 3600. 36 into 36, I know is a 1296. I'm trying to impress upon one point. Up to 50, 1 to 50, please learn your squares and cubes. Right? You cannot waste time trying to find out the value of 36 times 36. You should know 36 times 36 is 1296. So final answer is 4896. Choice C is the correct answer to the question. Revisit this video once more to get a good idea about how we went about solving this. As I mentioned, I'm going to leave you with two variants. Both of these are also classics. I'm not changing any data here. Instead of saying rectangle ABCD, I'm now changing it to square ABCD. All four vertices of the square are integers. The question is how many such squares are possible? This is a little different from how we went about it. Up to the grid line formation, it's the same, but the way you count it is going to be different for this question. Get the answer and post it in the comment section. Second one, right triangle ABC, right angle at B is constructed such that side AB is parallel to the x-axis, right? So BC is obviously going to be parallel to y-axis. The x and y core values have left it intact. The question is how many such right triangles can be formed? So one is square, second is right triangle. Post your answers to the comment section. Best wishes for your GMAT preparation. Before you leave, two things. Sign up as a trial user at wzkwo.in slash core. It's one of the most comprehensive online GMAT course. Get started with a free topic, statistics and averages. Build momentum to your GMAT preparation. Subsequently, pay up and unlock the remaining topics. Lastly, subscribe to the channel youtube.com slash bizako and spread the word among your friends who are preparing for GMAT. You may also choose to join this channel as a member for a small monthly fee and enjoy member-only perks that come with it and will help you boost your GMAT preparation.